trying to check out our space still. Take some people. Does it look good here, Stanley? Let me see. Okay. I think we're good. Okay. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Kitchen Therapy with Candy Lou. Today I am so excited. I have my first guest ever, Crystal Green. Crystal, Crystal, Crystal. Hi everybody. Okay, so Crystal is all the way here from the, the Dominican Republic. Crystal, tell us your organization's name. She's a founder of an organization, by the way, a nonprofit. So I'm founder of Eternally Cherished. We are based out of the Dominican Republic. It's our mission to encourage, empower, and employ women. I love it. Now, what kind of women? Are they like young women, old women, decrepit? What kind of women are you working with? So all women um, and young ladies, ages 12 up to 24 years old. I love it. So wait, say it again. Ages what? 12 to 24. 12 to 24. You guys, that is such a huge gap. That's a lot of patience. There's a lot that that entails. That's true. So I did mention Miss Selena. I am not the person who is the mom of eight. She's the mom of eight. In less than 90 days. She is about to encounter the challenge of a lifetime. Tell us about that challenge. So in less than 90 days, I'm gonna be opening my first transitional home in the Dominican Republic. It's for girls aging out of the orphanages. So basically they turn 18, the government and the orphanage said they need to get out and I'm providing a safe environment for them to transition into womanhood where they'll learn life skills, vocational skills, they'll get job placement. So that's what I'm gonna be doing in 90 days. I love it. So she's getting this home and they're all going to live under one roof. So that's why I'm saying she will be a mom of eight overnight. Can you imagine having eight girls? All right. They're not full grown yet. What's the youngest? What's the oldest that will be? They're going to be 18. 18 years old because they're aging out. Aging out. They're aging out of the foster care system. They're living under one roof with Miss Crystal. Now, the reason why this home is so important, in the Dominican Republic, there's something that these girls are typically drawn into. What type of work is it? Unfortunately, it's the sex trade industry. Um, prostitution is huge in the Dominican Republic. There's over 100,000 prostitutes working in the um, Dominican Republic. That's three times per capita than the United States of America. And a lot of people go there for sex tourism. Um, it's just a, um, it's a difficult situation financially because 44% of the population live below um, the poverty level. So when it comes to prostitution, it's legal there in the Dominican Republic and it's looked at as an easy way to be able to provide for your family because there's an unemployment rate of 15% and women get paid them less. There's a lot of inequalities for women. So women use that as an escape to provide a living for themselves and their families. And she's out there providing an alternative. It's so easy to say, you know what, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. But when that's a way you can make it, who are you to tell somebody what they can or cannot do? This woman right here has taken everything that she has and has moved to, to the Dominican Republic to help transform the lives of these girls and provide an alternative to what they are more than likely going to walk into if she doesn't step in. So... I'm really proud to know her, and um, I consider it an honor to be cooking with Crystal today. Now, this is where we need your help. I will definitely give her, I'm gonna post her information, so whoever wants to contact Crystal after this, I'm definitely gonna post everything, her website, her Instagram, Facebook, phone number, everything. Because, listen, this is the type of organization that we have to connect with. She is working. You remember the song by Whitney Houston? I believe the children are few. She's working with the future, you guys. She is working with the future, and she's paving a way for a brighter day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Amen. No, but she is. She's definitely <laughs> she's, she's working it out. So I'm going to post all of her information, and you can find out how you guys can be involved and get involved with what she's doing. Right from where you are, you can be involved in the work in the Dominican Republic. Okay. So, mom of eight, here's how it's going to work. She's going to come home after a long day of being out and about. She's going to come home from, I mean, there's fundraising you have to do, right? Fundraising, networking. I'm always out and about, um, obviously, currently in New York. And, New you know, York. I'll be in D.C. tomorrow. And just, just lots of different areas that I'm, you know, traveling from. But while I'm in the Dominican Republic with the girls as well, I'll be networking in Santo Domingo in the capital and everything. So, yes. So her days are going to be slam packed. So when she gets back home, she still has the responsibility of making something to eat for these girls. And 
Crystal, she was telling me something. You were like, uh, when I asked her, I said, so what do you usually cook? Because I wanted to find out what we could cook today. And she said, what did you say? Mexican food. Actually, no, she didn't. She <laughs> said, I eat out most of the time is what oh, she really oh, said. That's the truth. Yeah, I do. I generally, or pre-made foods. Because it's for myself only. I mean, so I do that. But when she does cook, she cooks Mexican food. Yes, when I do. When I, yeah, when I do. And she does it well. <laughs> But we wanted to provide some other alternatives so that when she's at home with these girls, she can go in the kitchen, whip out something, you know, really quick, simple, filling, satisfying, and also a level of nutrients. And not only that, provide something that they can make on their own as well. She wants to create self-sufficiency. Exactly. And so... Basically, I want, when we're talking about life skills that they're going to be learning, they're going to be learning how to cook. And so when they, when they learn how to cook, they're obviously going to be cooking for each other. So nightly, they'll be doing new recipes and things that we need to, you know, be able to have for them with the food. So they'll be able to learn how to be self-sufficient, like you said. I love it. Okay, so what we're going to do is today, we're going to do lasagna three ways. Yesterday, I want to thank everybody who chimed in. I said, I need some ideas to give to this mom, mom of eight overnight, okay? <laughs> I need to give her some ideas. And so my cousin Bryant and my sister Tabitha, they gave me two incredible ideas that I ran with. They said lasagna. Okay, so we are going to do lasagna three different ways. How do you do lasagna three different ways? Let's take a look right now. Okay, so we already, what we did was we pre-cooked the lasagna noodles and I don't have a, a you know, a little strainer. So we have to um, high cut. Oh, Jesse, be cool. Back to work for me. Keep doing these videos. Make sure you go live on YouTube as well. Thank you. That's my brother-in-law, Jesse. I love you. Take Hi, care Jessie. of yourself. Yeah, that's my brother. <laughs> I don't like him, but I love him. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and, uh, and bring the, the pasta over here. We're going to drain it. Like I said, I'm kind of, I'm like a hood cook. You know what I'm saying? There's so many tools I should have that I don't have, but I'm going to get them slowly but surely. Um, so go ahead and drain that. We took the pasta. We already took out the, uh, the hot water. And because uh, Crystal was like, they're going to stick together, Candace. And I was like, oh, <laughs> so she's, she's helping me out to get it together. So, um, hi, Ashley. Thank you for tuning in. We are absolutely, Miss Sharon, you're ahead of the game. So we are going to do three different, so you've got to hang tight to see the different types that we do. So we took the hot water out a little bit ago. She put in some cool water just to make sure that it didn't dry out. And now we have our, you want to show them what we have here? Lasagna noodles. Yes. Ta-da. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with, we're going to do one half of the pan with lasagna noodles. And the other half of the pan, you want to show them the next ingredient that we're going to do? Zucchini. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to do one half if you are um, gluten-freer. And we're going to do another half if you like gluten, and that's what you do. Okay. <laughs> now, I was going to keep one half all vegetarian, but for the sake of time and for the sake of just, like, you know, resources, I'm doing everything with ground beef and sausage. We have two different types of sausage. We have, excuse me, two different types of meat. We have a sweet uh, sausage, sweet Italian sausage, and we have ground beef, and we're going to mix them together to merge the flavors and give it a little bit of life and zest. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So... I'm gonna pass this over to the homie, and she's gonna head over to the stove, and I'm gonna take you with her. And then we're going to, um, yeah, we're gonna get this show going. Here we go, come with, come with me. Here we go. So, how did you get your passion for working with the girls? Like, where did this come from? I mean, this is a big deal. You're working with girls who would typically turn to prostitution, and you're taking them into your own home. Where did you get this passion from? Well, basically, um, I have a passion for women and young girls to understand their worth and their value. So me growing up, I had a lot of issues with um, confidence and self-esteem issues, which I obviously continuously do throughout my life. You have different things that, you know, happen in life that might take a stab at your confidence and your, and your self-esteem and, and, and make you question your capability of being able to do things and, and be successful. And I feel like God has put a purpose and a plan in each one of our lives. And I love helping people find out that purpose and building them up and helping them accomplish their dreams. So um, within that, I went on vacation to the Dominican Republic for my birthday about three years ago. And I saw that, you know, the young women were, um, there was a lot of prostitution. It was evident. I was 
was in the tourist area and they're everywhere. So many prostitutes, young, there's 12 year olds, there's, you know, older women. And um, I went back home and I said, you know what, I'm going to look up the statistics in this country. And that's when I found out everything about the inequalities of women. Wow. So with that being said, I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm listening. I'm just going to multitask. <laughs> so I said, okay, you know, that I need, I feel like God's calling me to be focused in the Dominican Republic right now. So that's why I decided to pick that as the first country. I'm sorry, I was about to speak Spanish. The oh, first speak, country. Okay. She speaks Spanish. Feel free to like, you know, see, plop into it. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I did with that one. No, but I do speak Spanish. So, um, hola, como estas, todo. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, <laughs> No, but so yeah, so I decided that to be the first country of, of many that we will be able to impact the young girls. So that really drew my heart towards it and I knew I wanted to start a nonprofit and I knew working with women and young girls was my passion. That's incredible. So um, what's been the biggest challenge since you've been out in the Dominican Republic? I mean, there's one thing to start your own nonprofit in the city that you're going to be working in, but to start a nonprofit and go to a different, you know, a whole different region, you know, part of the world, what's been your biggest challenge? I think, you know, the biggest challenge would probably be like, you have you go to a new country, you have to obviously learn the different culture, the custom. So, you know, going through that process and learning everything, obviously, it was a challenge in the beginning. I've been there for about three years now. I've become accustomed to, you know, things. And a lot of the things that um, is a big challenge is, you know, being able to be here in the United States and create awareness about what I'm doing when I'm so much in the United States, in the VR actually doing the cause. So that's, that's, that's difficult. Do you ever catch a lot of flack from people who are like, man, you out in the Dominican Republic, we have problems here. Why are you so worried about kids in other countries? Do you All get that? the time. How do you, I can't stand <laughs> that mentality. Cause I have a, a whole nother, I have a whole like box of questions for people that ask that question. But how do you respond to that? You know, I respond that, you know, we all, every country and every place has needs. And I feel like this specifically is where God's calling me to serve in the Dominican Republic. And this yes. is a passion that he's laid upon my heart to be able to reach these young girls. Um, this, it's, it's different. Obviously, there's a lot of poverty things that we have in the United States. But sometimes when you go, obviously, to a third world country or other countries, it's a lot more extreme. And I felt that, you know, it's, it's, it's very extreme. Obviously, the average wage is a dollar to $2 an hour in the DR. Um, the food is still, you know, expensive. There's still, you know, there's just a lot of uh, a lot of economic hardship. So I felt like this is exactly where I need to be. Okay, so she's where she needs to be. So for people who are like, well, there's problems here. There are. How about you take care of those problems? <laughs> Let her do what she does, and you do what you do. I think the cool thing about it is she's getting busy with her purpose. She didn't find an excuse. A lot of us. When we have our, you know, purpose laid out in front of us, it's easy to, like, create excuses as to why we can't do it. I don't have enough money. I don't know how to do it. I can't speak Spanish. I can't. She said, all right, I got I got the language now. Actually, you didn't have the language. I did, and three years she ago, I did not speak anything but hola, como estas. And now I can obviously do my lesson plans with the young girls. Uh, when I go into the orphanages, I'm working on their self-esteem, their self-value, their self-worth. We have a campaign right now called hashtag worth more so women recognize in their worth and we go in there with our lesson plans to the young girls um, from 12 to 18 and we've been doing these lesson plans with them and I do lesson plans in Spanish now um, because just being submerged in the culture and practicing and, and wanting to be able to communicate effectively with them I've been able to pick up the Spanish language. So you guys are getting that? So she could have easily been like I can't speak Spanish how am I gonna make it out there? But she still went. She didn't let the fear of not knowing how to communicate or fear of failure keep her back. She went. So my question for you today is, what is it that you feel like your bigger purpose in life is? And what's holding you back from truly doing it? Is it you? Because if you're not doing it, it's you. That's true. At the end of the day, there's obstacles, but we all have obstacles. The goal of an obstacle is to get over it, get around it. Okay, so what we're doing right now is this. You like how I keep swinging my hair? Ow! <laughs> um, here's what we're doing, you guys. Right now, we are taking this sausage out of the casing because uh, we want to make, oh, look at, see, she did it much. <laughs> see, she's a cook. I'm just the person who likes to cook online, I guess. <laughs> so look at that. So we're taking the meat, we're taking this sausage out of the casing, and she did it so effortlessly. Let's do it. Let's see her do another one. She's taking it right on out. Reminds me, like, of a cartoon where they were, like, you know, <laughs> pop, pop, pop. So watch this. So she gets the... Show us how you did it. Okay. It's really kind of nasty, but um, it's going to be really good. There we go. And so that's how you do that. 
So we're gonna fry this up. The reason why we're mixing the two is because we really wanna have a nice uh, blend. We're gonna do ground beef as well as uh, the sausage. We wanna have a nice um, Italian taste. And we're not gonna get that just from the ground beef because honestly, I don't really have all the seasonings I need, which Crystal let me know that. <laughs> And, uh, but we're, you know, we're going to work. We're going to use what we got. You know, that's, that's the key to life is use what you got. That's true. That's you know? true. Because a lot of times, you know, you're not, you don't have time to go get things. You forgot things. Or you went to the grocery store and forgot to get stuff. <laughs> that's me. That's so, me. You can't just be like, especially when you have to cook for a lot of people and things. I'm, I'm assuming mm -hmm. that you can't be like, everybody hold up, I forgot the onions. Yeah, I forgot the onions. <laughs> right. All 80 y'all. Wait, right here. I got to go get the onion. No. The one onion the at the grocery onion. store. <laughs> That's not going to work. That's true. So, there we go. You're doing a great job. She's a great cook. Look at her. Just look at her over here. I did with that one. <laughs> she does her thing. All right. Now, you guys will not believe. We just met. Well, maybe you will believe it. I don't know. But we just met. What was it? Friday of last week? Yes, it was. Or Saturday. Was it Friday or Saturday? It was this past week. This past weekend that just passed. I've known her for a week now. And so there was another, it was a mutual friend of ours who honestly I just met for the first time for real, for real, Aquila Maddox. Am I saying her last name right? Yes, ma'am. Aquila Maddox. She's the inspirationalist. She's a motivational speaker. And they came out here to work on um, her nonprofit. Yes, I had an event um, at this gym. With some, with some football players. Yes, Buster Shrine, he is a um, professional football player um, that plays for the New York Jets. So he invited us position? out. Cornerback. He's a quarterback. Yeah, and so, you know, just through connections, he invited me out here to participate in his event. To um, He's all into fitness and, great, and fitness for a cause. So um, they were, we were able to partner up in that event and, you know, um, be able to raise funds for the organization for this transitional home in June. So super excited about that connection. And that is why I'm here. And that's how I met Kathy Lou. And what do I call you now? My BFinity. Yeah, no, exactly. I call it BFinity. <laughs> we were actually trying to make, we are trying to make a wheel of jelly. They have this crazy love-hate relationship. And so I was just feeding into it one day and it, and it kind of stuck. So Aquila, if you ever decide to watch this, just know that I'm... <laughs> She's my BFF. We're in here cooking. <laughs> my yeah, <laughs> I'm her favorite now. <laughs> no, I'm not. You, I, you're, you're irreplaceable. <laughs> she, she's irreplaceable. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Erica. So this is Erica and Crystal. It's crazy how this works. Erica and Crystal know each other. That's my Erica's my sister. Yes. Crystal's my new BFinity. And they know each other, and they both have like this Spanish link. They both <laughs> connect into that world, and you know what I'm talking about. Yes. And Erica Maria, you claro know what I'm que si tu sabe, amiga. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Mexican. What's that? Yeah, well, with that, I don't know what that. Know what <laughs> okay, so there we go. So she's gonna cook that. Um, she obviously doesn't cook very fast. Uh, <laughs> here's some garlic powder and some. Erica, here's some, what is this called? <laughs> Oregano. One day I called it something different. I, yeah, Erica has jokes about that too with me, but Erica's my homie. She um, she makes me laugh a lot. Oh, yes, she does. Wait, do you do bachata? Bachata? Claro que si. Whoop. Who saw it? Ah! <laughs> I don't. I do. They can't bang. <laughs> 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 Yeah, bachata, that's um, obviously like one of the main um, dances of the Dominican Republic. How do you do it? Teach me how to do it. It's like, oh Jesus, now I'm going to instruct Okay, here we go. Okay, so <laughs> it's like. <laughs> we're going to learn. Everybody get up to your feet oh, and we're going to bachata. Bachata. So I'm not a professional, but it's like a, it's like three steps. So it's one, two, three, step. One, two, three. And you move your hips. Two, three. One, what do you do with my hands? Two, three. Look right here. Generally, you're dancing with somebody. So. <laughs> so that. Oh, my hands but <laughs> shut up. So bachata and merengue is very obviously popular. The rangos, merengue. Merengue is the one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two oh, here. you got it. One, two, one, two, one, two. I need some music, girl. I mean, but yes. <laughs> do it. Do the twist. Do the back. <laughs> Crazy. 
Okay, so Sharon, a good friend of mine, um, she's going to be going to the Dominican Republic. Hey, Sharon. In June. So y'all got to connect. Okay, I will be there. And you know the house is opening in June, Sharon. We would love you to come ah. by. We actually do do group trips. Um, a lot of people that have been on vacation and they're like, hey, I just want to swing by and come to the orphanage or I want to, you know, come volunteer just for one day out of my vacation. Totally possible. Hit me up, Sharon, or anybody else that would like to do that. But we also do group trips. We have a college group um, coming out. Um, a college group coming out from um, um, Arizona, and um, it's it's with Margot Brisky, Discover Her Life Coach, and she has a group that she does at the university. Um, and they're going to be coming out this fall. So we do do group trips if your church or anybody's interested in making it out. Okay, or is there like, where would you stay? Because like, I'm going to come. You want to come? Yes, we, yeah. we, we work on all that. Basically, um, we have trip fees. You know, if you just want to come to volunteer, you didn't already plan on coming to the country, we have trips and we can, you know, arrange transportation, hotel, food, and everything. It would just be a fee that we would arrange with the group. Okay. Yeah. That is so cool. I've never been to the Dominican Republic. Are you close to the water? <sighs> yes, it's a beautiful beach. It's a beautiful beach. If you've never gone, it's amazing. The people are super friendly, um, very down to earth. Um, it's an awesome place to come and visit. If you guys want to visit the Dominican Republic and also get your little, like, I did something good feels on, mm -hmm. go and visit the eternally cherished house. Go visit, go visit that nonprofit. They are making a difference. They are working with young girls, helping to take them off the street before they even get a chance to get on the street and sell their bodies to prostitution. So, okay, oh, we're, we have a painter here right now, so that's what's happening right now. But hey, hey. <laughs> um, okay, on a mission to volunteer and look for a house. Oh, oh, wait, Sharon, so clarify, oh. you're on a mission to volunteer, like you want to volunteer and you're looking for a house or in the DR. If so, connect. Definitely connect, connect, connect. Definitely. This is going to be really, really good. Um, I'm excited to go and check out what she's doing. I know in Phoenix, Arizona, you guys know about Van Buren. So, what's the, do they have like a Van Buren? Van Buren is the place where the prostitutes go. Do um, they have a street there? Yeah, well, you know what? The whole tourist area of Obaro and Punta Cana is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of tourists that come there to have sex with the women. But also in the northern region in Cabarete, that's where you have a lot of, unfortunately, um, families selling their younger kids as well to have sex with men. Their like families them. are selling them? Yeah, there's some situations where mothers are having their children go out and it's, do stuff like that. So the wow. girl, a lot of the girls that I've worked with... Um, I wonder if they threaten them. Like, listen, you don't like right. No, I normally it's like, you're always like, you're going to do it regardless. Yeah. Because we need to eat. And it's, it's a horrible situation, obviously. Um, but a lot of the girls that I work with, when they were in the orphanage, they weren't necessarily rescued out of prostitution, but they have been rescued out of hostile, abusive, or physically or mentally or emotionally abusive situations. So um, there's definitely, you know, the, um, the the horrible things that happen where the police come in and rescue them, and then those are a lot of the type of the girls that I'm working with. So when I do go into the orphanages, I'm trying to help them, you know, reestablish emotion, emotional health while trying to um, help them recognize their value and self-worth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tell us what you're doing right here, Crystal. Right now, I am I am right now making the ground beef, making sure the sausage gets incorporated with the ground beef. And so I added the oregano, black pepper, salt, and garlic powder. So super um, fast. This doesn't take long at all. I mean, I'm just going to take over the show. She, she, she left me for a second. So this doesn't take long at all, you guys. Just go ahead and, you know, watch it. We're browning the beef, making sure there's no pink in it so we are staying safe. Um, so basically that's what I'm doing here today. So I'm super excited to be on the show. Like Candy said, I met her a week ago and we just clicked. She's freaking amazing, you guys. And I was like, oh my God, you're doing this show? This is so awesome. She's like, you want to be my first guest? And I'm like, of course, you know what I mean? Because like I've never been on a show before. So this is freaking amazing. Love it. I want a show. <laughs> <laughs> and she's on my show. <laughs> I love it. Oh, this smells good. It Wait, does. let's see if you guys can smell it. Can you smell it? Can you smell it? Can you smell it? it that smells smell amazing. so good. And we're not just making it up. If it's stunk, I promise you, we For both real. have the same, like, honesty love one that we'll be like, mm. 
And it's not because we hungry, but we is hungry. But it's we, not. We's hungry. <laughs> I show <laughs> is hungry. <laughs> but yeah, that sausage, something, you know, that all the flavors in that sausage that are, you know, coming out and that smell, it smells so good. It smells just like a big batch of Italy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, smell, I smell Italy. <laughs> You know, yes. you know that that game you played when you were younger. I spy, <laughs> I spy with my brown eyes. <laughs> I smell with my nose something. I smell Italy. You know, right yes. there, right there. It's almost finished. As soon as it finishes, you guys, we are like way on our way to like having this delectable, delicious meal finished because we're just gonna pop everything in the pan. You know. So this part, I would say, Crystal, if you're gonna make this on your way home, bye, Miss Sharon. Um, yeah, definitely connect. Definitely reach out to Crystal. Sharon, yes. eternally Pinterest. cherished. More on Facebook. She tagged me in the post for this, so check that out. And then just write me. Yep, absolutely. We'll put. A, I'll post all her information. Uh, hey, Joy, Joyelle, nice to see you. Yeah, tell the baby no screaming, no scream, screaming. So the baby was crying, and you played the video, and the baby quit crying. We like that. We like baby that. likes the food. Baby's hungry. Baby, <laughs> baby can smell Italy. Baby can smell Italy. That's what's going on. Um, okay, so when you want to make this meal, and you're like in a rush, I think the best thing to do is really prep. Do that prep work ahead of time. Get this meat done. If you have time in the mornings when you're making breakfast, uh, put, the, put the meat in the skillet, fry it up, drain it, put it in a Tupperware container, come back home later on, and just throw it in the pan. You know what I'm saying? I like to prep things when I have an opportunity. That's true. So, I think this is going to be like so easy too that, you know, especially when you're working with ground beef, there's so many things you can do with that. Say, say I prep like ground beef like Monday and then I have, I didn't put it all in the recipe, you know, on Monday and mm, I can save it. That's a good idea. That's so you're true. saying instead of using it all for one thing, yeah. Go ahead and spread it out for multiple different types of meals. And teaching the girls to be able to preserve and use what they have so they won't be wasting. You know, it's all a process. We always think about, like, what we learn from our mothers and, you know, and stuff. But we're, I'm dealing with girls that have been in orphanage all their life. So all the, you know, different skills that we've learned on, like, how to preserve things or cook or what's healthy, what vegetables and stuff, a lot of these girls have no idea. Mm -hmm. No, no. That's too much. No, it's good. Shake, 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 shake. <laughs> Look at that. I need some. Okay. Oh my gosh. Miss Nubel, send me your cookies. I want some cookies. Um, I'm actually going to be ordering something from her very soon. Uh, Kim Baked Chemistry is in the house. If you guys need delicious cookies, she makes cupcakes, cakes, the whole nine yards. But if you mm -hmm. ever need good cookies, which I'm actually going to make some cookies today. Um, and you know, I'm, I told you I'm not a cookie person, but I can never. I cannot say no to a flourless chocolate cookie. And I never made one before, but I found a great recipe and I will give credit where credit is due as soon as we get over there and we start making that. But uh, I really would rather have one of Miss Noodles baked chemistry cup, uh, cookies today. But since it's not possible, I guess we gotta go with the next best thing. Are you trying to, you wanna get done Girl, too? trying to speed it up. <laughs> she turned the heat up. Let me we show you what she said. Okay, for those of y'all who just turned in, here we go, we are making some, uh, what are we making? We're making sausage. Sausage and beef mixed together. This is a sweet sausage that you got. Yep. Um, sweet Italian sausage. And we're mixing it together to incorporate the flavor. The what? The flavor. How do you say flavors in Spanish? How would you La say that? How would you say incorporate the flavors to make it delicious? Incorporate. Hmm. I'm not a professional. <laughs> <laughs> uh, incorporate. No, or, I don't want to say. But flavor. Para un bueno sabor, cuando come. Para muy bueno comida deliciosa, rica, tu sabe. Girl, <laughs> and that's just three years of being there? Yes, yes, it's definitely, and people help me, like my girls, you know, when I'm teaching them, they're learning English. That's one of the other skills that they're going to be learning in the transitional home. Um, is I'm going to continue to, you know, help work on their English skills and making sure we have um, classes for English as well. They'll be going to vocational skill and we'll also be having volunteers come out every year teaching them um, English as well. So the girls will be at my house for nine to 12 months learning these different skills. Wow. Yes, so English is definitely one of them because in the Dominican Republic, a lot of the higher end jobs for pay are um, people that are bilingual. So. Wow, that's good to know. So if you need a job, uh, <laughs> you go to Dominican Republic and help people learn English. That's true. They always accept a lot of people from the United States that teach English to teach English to the people of the Dominican Republic. You think that's done? 
think it I is. I think it's done. Okay, let's go ahead and drain that. Let's make this lasagna. Right. Okay, so you, if you need a, uh, there's a lid right there. We can also use this to kind of like catch the meat in case it falls, you know, because okay. we can't afford to let the <laughs> meat fall in the sink. Got you. Okay, so I'm gonna take you guys back over to the other side of the kitchen with me. You wanna you can do that here. You don't need me. You need me? No. Do she doesn't thing, need me. Girl. And so just drain that there and then bring the skillet over there and All I'll right. be waiting for you. Careful that heat transfers through, <laughs> through that yeah. lid up. Okay. I'm having a great time cooking with Crystal Green from Eternally Cherished. As we are learning about her organization, learning a little bit about the Dominican Republic. And now I want to know a little bit about these girls specifically. Like, have you formed any relationships with these girls you're gonna that you're gonna be living with? Yes, I have. Um, a lot of the girls I've been working with over the last um, two years in the orphanage since they were 15 years old. So it's a blessing that I've been able to um, work with these girls. Actually. Before I found out about this problem about them aging out of the orphanages and not having a place to go, um, these girls were um, um, able to stay in the orphanage at 18 for a while. But this is a new problem that's arisen over the last year where they really have to go and they're getting kicked out. And some of them are going to live with family members where it's not the best situation, maybe the same family members that they got taken away from. So it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a tragic, you know, thing that's happening. So that's why I wanted to um, provide this available space for them to come transition independently into womanhood safely, more so than anything, and just create a better uh, opportunity for a better future for them as well, so. You guys got that? <laughs> At the end, you gotta be like, you heard? You heard? You heard? <laughs> if you hadn't heard, you better rewind it. Play this again later. <laughs> eternally cherished right here. Okay, so we also have eternally cherished, but we also got some lasagna noodles, which yes. I think are a little bit more priority because we're starving. Yes. We're hungry. They turned out really good, they too. Did. I was scared because I've never made lasagna noodles before, but this wow. This is what they feel like when they're done. That's what's up. Yes, and they're really done. Like, they're done. <laughs> this is like, I feel like... No, I'm saying, <laughs> I've always been scared to make lasagna, but you have definitely opened up my eyes about how easy it is. I opened her eyes. <laughs> and listen, I've only made lasagna look, look seriously, probably about, I don't know, maybe two times, maybe? Yeah, two times. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut these noodles. Now we're gonna save this for something else for part two. Put that right there. So we're gonna go ahead and just chisel these down, make them the same size as our, uh, pan. We're only going to do half of a skillet, or excuse me, half of a pan. The reason why is because uh, we're going to do the other half, another, uh, using something else, zucchini. I'm going to layer this up here. Zucchini. Some zucchini, boo. <laughs> okay, so there we go. All right, so right here we have our first layer of lasagna. So for those of you guys who suggested Tabitha and Bryant, namely, Thank you guys for suggesting lasagna. This is a great meal. If you have a large family like she's going to have in 90 days, <laughs> eight girls under one roof, she's going to need some quick meals yes. that she's able to put together, but something that has some nutrients as well as that's going to sustain and make them feel like they've eaten and not be hungry three hours later. That's true. That's important. You ever eat in like two hours later? Every time I eat Asian food. Same here. <laughs> You're just like hungry. You're just hungry afterwards, you know? Yes, and you already expected it too. Like, well, let me schedule two or three hours of what else I'm going to eat because this rice and chicken is not going to hold me over. It's not going to cut it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to cut it. I don't know why, because if it's like Latin food and it's rice and chicken and stuff, you're good, right? But something about Asian food. I think they put something in it that like eats your food up. I think there's a chemical <laughs> in the Asian food that it like just eats your food up. When you eat it, it eats it up. It takes it away. So it dissolves it. It dissolves. That's why they're not big people either because it just, true. that chemical in their food dissolves the food. True. You think I'm playing? It could be true. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so we have right here, we have our first layer. It's going to be our noodles. All right. So now we were actually talking about this before we started recording. We didn't know what our pattern was going to be. If you guys have a suggestion as far as the pattern meaning, should we do the sauce, the cheese, the ricotta? Y'all got any ideas? Because we really don't care. We just want to get it in there because we exactly. are hungry. Yeah, we are hungry. All we want is our food. No lie. Okay. So let's slide this uh, meat on. I mean, the sauce. Meat. Sauce. Sauce and meat. So you think we should do a little bit of meat first or a little bit of sauce first? What Let's do, do the meat. Okay. Why not? Why not? Like Donald Trump. Did anybody say anything? Nobody said anything. Oh, you so guys she's going to leave it up to us? I think it's, yeah. Okay, there. maybe a little bit of sauce first. What do you guys say? Sauce first? A, a dibble down with sauce Oops, first? Take a little off. Okay, so let's do a little. What's our brand that we're using today? Prego. 
Yeah, that's, yeah, that looks really good. Is that enough? I think so. Okay, I'll take this. Okay. okay, here we go. So I'm gonna use this and just kind of spread this. I'll show y'all what we're doing right here. Okay, so here we go. So what we're doing is we're just gonna take this sauce and spread it right on over the noodles. I'm left-handed now, just so I can get in that corner. <laughs> there we go. And so we're just spreading it around. And the next thing we're going to do Oh, they're telling us now meat then sauce. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do meat next then. Okay, so here we go. You should not use your hands like that if you're cooking for people, but... Well, they're clean. We're good. Okay, there we go. Also, sparingly, am I doing too much, too little? What do y'all say? Let me see. Any suggestions? What do you think, Crystal? Keep going this direction? I think we're doing good. I think um, just get a little everywhere and keep it pushing. Okay. All right, there we go. That's yep. good, right? Okay, ricotta, what were we saying? Sauce, ricotta, what's next, guys? You guys... I need you. I need you to work with me. But... Meat, then sauce. Okay. But, so but I mean, do we put sauce? sauce again? I guess we'll put a little bit more okay. sauce just to kind of go and make it. Okay, there we go. And we'll just kind of do a little mix of roux. Okay, there we go. I probably should oh, that. Oh, that looks delicious, though. All right, and then we're going to do what? Some ricotta? We're going to just wing it. Or now, should, we do, should we do noodles next and then ricotta? Um, Ricotta. Ricotta? Mix it all together like that? Okay. I think it just goes on top, right? No, they don't want to get sick. Do you guys, uh, well, well, um, and Tisha and said, you, um, you can combine the meat and sauce for a, a quick alternative. Oh, that's, yeah, that's good to that's know. That's very good to can know. Can we spread this out or just? I think you just spread it out like, yeah. Okay. You know, I think I should do a noodle. You think it's yeah, like, probably. It's not messy? Yeah, 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 probably. Okay, so we're going to, see, this is what happens when you cook at home, for real. Like, this is real life. When, see, neither one of us really cook lasagna. Nope. And this is just the reality. But we're trying something new. And so you try something new, you gotta feel your way through it. You don't always do it perfectly or seamless, but the goal is to do it. And that's what we're doing. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some ricotta cheese as soon as I get this right where I want it to be. There we go. All right, we we'll do one more. You did a great job with these nice. noodles. They feel really thorough. They do. Some thorough noodles. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to add some ricotta cheese. Yeah, I definitely feel like you were 100% you were correct. You think so? Yes, look at the way that spreads on there. Mmm, look at that, Jesus. It would have been a mess before. Yeah, just not layered right. Now, listen, there's all kinds of ways to do it, and I'm sure there's a right way. I'm sure Martha Stewart has <laughs> probably laid out a way to do it, and she's going to be like, this is wrong. But listen, we don't care. We're just doing it in a way that works for us. It's like a marriage, you know? It's like a relationship. <laughs> You know what's so good about these type of recipes as well is that when you're throwing all this stuff together into bakes or lasagna, it really doesn't matter. It all goes together and it just, it tastes amazing because it's the ingredients more than anything. Now, if I'm smart, I should go a little light on this ricotta cheese. Oh, girl. <laughs> you gotta love, the, gotta love the cheese, though. Mm, look at that. <laughs> that looks so good. I'm gonna put good. a little bit of this, um, to flavor it up a little bit more, though. I'm gonna add a little bit of this garlic powder to this layer. All right. You know? Get it. Yes. You like that? I do. More flavor. Mm, the more flavor you get, yes. There we go. Yes. That looks better. I like that a lot better. Okay. So then we're going to add, what do you want to do? Some more sauce? Or yes. some meat? Meat. Because mm. they say meat, then sauce. Now we know. Okay. So what's the reason? Does anybody know the reason why we should do meat first and sauce? Yeah. Um, let us know. Let me see. Who said that? It's baked chemistry. Baked chemistry said it. See, she's actual, she's been studying the chemistry of food and baking. So she knows like the, the science behind it. So tell us the science, Miss Smarty Pants. Yeah, we want to know. Tell us, Miss Smarty. Oh, this is going to be good, actually. Listen, I don't care what nobody says. Should we put some regular mozzarella cheese in there, too? Yeah, let's do it. Why not? Or is it usually just going on the top? Does anybody know this is normally going on the top? Bryant. Maybe he said he you took your big cousin's advice. Yes, I did. Bryant. Good choice, sweetie. Bryant, does the, does, do you put mozzarella inside the lasagna? I say let's do it. Cause okay. What do you say? A little cheese and then some, or some cheese, then some sauce? What do you say? Let's do some sauce, then cheese. Okay. Put this right here. Sorry. Like my, <laughs> my hand, once, look, once my hands are right, you know, you know the story, my hands are committed. <laughs> So just pour it. Now you he says, yeah, you can add the mozzarella cheese inside. Oh, look at that. You just pour it so nicely. 
Thank you. It's a skill. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> it's a very, like, you know, well, you know, I have to learn that skill over time. There you go. The way she sprinkled that cheese. Do it like that dude with the salt. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Do it. <laughs> yes. Get it. Yes. Here, let me see you hit it. Here, you hit it one time. Go ahead. <laughs> I know you want to do it. I know oh, you. Girl, I, I mean, I just seen it on TV. A little Here we go. Bit, and I'm just, yes. <laughs> yes. Just a little <laughs> I love it. This is actually looking pretty good. I think we go. I think we're gonna be pleasantly surprised. For sure. That's what I'm thinking, at least. So now we do noodle. Oh yeah. Now we do some more. Yeah, noodles for sure. Do we should we get more ricotta cheese? Um. Well, Maybe like a dollar. I think we're gonna go like this. We're gonna go like okay. that. We're just gonna kind of because it's gonna spread when it bakes. That's true. It's gonna melt down. That's really what we should just boom. Look at that. Why didn't y'all tell me that, Brian? I know you know this. <laughs> See now, Brian's. We're related through my dad. Um, his mom is married he to said my dad's no. brother. What? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> what? Brian, it's all good. We're going to press the noodle down on top. It's going to. He said, don't do that. <laughs> he said, don't do that. Ooh. Brian, it's all good. Should I put some more sauce or not? No. No sauce? Okay, guys. We're totally playing it by ear, but I'm telling you, it's going to be amazing. It is. You know, I can just crease it like that. You sure you can. can. Then you can. No. It, it's, this is it's serious. Strong. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So that's that. This is actually the perfect amount of noodles. Great. There's that one. I wish I could just bend it and break it, but it doesn't want to do that. This part looks sloppy now, doesn't it? No, 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 no. It's all good. Once you throw that cheese on top, we'll never know what's underneath there. Right? Exactly. It does look amazing. It's kind of wet. I wonder if it's wet if that's going to mess it up. You think it's too wet? Um, it's a little damp, huh? Yeah, it should be fine. Okay. Because we didn't overcook them. That's one thing that I was nervous about, you guys, was overcooking the noodle because I've seen people make lasagna. And that's why I never even tried to do it, to be honest with you. I was like, okay, I, I see people overcook the noodle and they just completely fall apart and then it's a mess. But... Obviously, you can see it's not as difficult as I thought it was. Now, are you taking the success for this lasagna because the noodle is obviously the base? Are, are you <laughs> If the noodle is the base of the whole recipe and I happen to be the one to boil the noodle. No, I'm just like... <laughs> I'm gonna put, should I put some more mayonnaise? Should I put some sauce? A little sauce on top and then cheese? Cheese first because it spreads easier. The ricotta or the... Oh, I got you. Are you using more ricotta? Or no, no, I think we're I'm done. Good okay, we're good so on So I think ricotta. I'm going to put some sauce and like cheese on top. Definitely. Sounds amazing. You have to drain your noodle. We definitely drain the noodles. Just... You always cook your meat and sauce together first, so you this? know next time. Who's Brian. Oh, okay, Brian. Well, you should have you should have told us when we were asking. Brian, you. why were you? Where well, were you at the beginning of the show? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Brian. Cousin Brian. There we go. Oh, listen. He, um, um, Mtisha says that you can use no baked noodles in another easy alternative as another easy alternative. That's awesome too. What's a no baked noodle? Ooh, shoot. Um, from what I've seen, I believe you put the noodles in the, like, they're already ready. You don't have to boil them or anything. Am I right, Antisha? You just put them? Oh, Brian said, good job. Yes. Yes! <laughs> so, apparently, the no-bake, I guess you just put them in there. No boil. Yeah, you don't boil them. And you just put them in the, in the, um, you know, the pan and layer everything mm -hmm. and put it in the oven and they're ready. Guess that's the easy alternative. That's a great alternative. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna sprinkle this on here, um, and then we're gonna have. Now I'm gonna record. The, we're gonna sit this over there. I'm gonna um, have you do the slicing of the zucchini. Awesome. Well, I'm super excited to work with zucchini as an alternative than um, noodles because I, a lot of the times, am trying to cut carbs. And I think that um, it's it, even if, you know, it's not something that you're trying to do, it's good to know how um, because at different times in our lives, we need to cut back on certain things. And um, I want to be able to teach the girls nutrition as well. So I'm super excited about being able to make healthy alternatives. Now, this is what I've never done. I've always wanted to learn how to cook um, with things to replace instead of flour and noodles and stuff. So yes. This is awesome. Because so often we feel like, you know, you're going to, let's say the doctor or, you know, just your body's responding to certain things in a certain way. So you cut a particular item out like noodles or bread. You feel like, man, now I can never eat French toast. I can never have spaghetti. I can never have lasagna. Yeah, you can. 
It's just you got to find the alternative, you know. It takes a little bit of uh, research at times and talking to people, but yeah. um, it's worth it. Exactly. People are getting so creative nowadays with these um, gluten-free recipes and yep. stuff. That is so easy to redo any recipe that would normally have um, flour and, and wheat base. Yep. I totally agree. Okay, so how are you going to slice this? Are you going to try it with that or are you going to try it with this? Um, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, <laughs> let you. <laughs> no, try it out, try it out. See okay, I mean. so we were talking about, like, going in deeper with this. Because we're making noodles out of the zucchini. We're making yes. flat lasagna noodles. Is that working very well for you? No, I, I, I'm working on it. Let me show them what you're doing. Hold on. Okay, guys, hold on one second. I'm going to flip the camera. So, I mean, this could be a noodle. Personally, um, you know, I think it should probably be a thicker and I'm trying I to do that without okay. cutting myself. Here's the other alternative. Okay. Let's give this a shot. <laughs> okay. Okay, don't cut yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. How am I going to not cut myself with this? Okay, so maybe I can go in on it like that. Let's see how that looks. I've cut cheese with that several times Jesus. and it works out really well. Let me okay, try. So <laughs> let me see. Let me up. let the chef do it. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> because I feel like, so are they going to be thick noodles? Does anybody have any... Um, let me see. Suggestions here. on how to here, try one more time and I'm gonna try it after you if it doesn't okay. pan out. With this. See, this is what this is called real life, you guys. This is this is real life. This is what it looks like when you're trying something for the first time. That there's who says there's any and it's a little thin. It's, it's a, a little, little thin. thin. I want it to be a little bit thicker. Let's see. Let me try something real quick. Here guys, hold on. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I didn't leave you with her. That's what she's saying. <laughs> okay, so this is what I was thinking initially, but obviously it's not proving to work very well. But we're gonna try it anyway. I'm thinking if we press harder, maybe that will that'll do it's it. It's definitely coming out better than mine. So this is kind of what we're looking. <laughs> this is what we're looking for. What she did was wrong. <laughs> no, no, she didn't do it. She didn't do it wrong. Yeah. Shoot. Sorry, that was wrong. <laughs> so they're kind of slippery. I'm wondering if, oh man, they're really slippery. <laughs> All right, so that's really slippery. Now does anybody have, how, has anybody ever worked with zucchini replacing it for a pasta and what have you used to cut it, just out of curiosity? Yeah, how did you guys use, how'd you guys do it? Bryant. Mtisha, am I saying her name right? I'm so sorry if I mess it up. No, you name. are. Mtisha. There we go. Okay, so we just want to make some thin noodles. I mean, it's a little, it's a little challenging because it's really slippery. And you know, I understand why we're trying to make them like not thin, not too thick, but thin, because obviously, um, the cooking process. You don't want to have your zucchini, um, you know, raw through the process. So I definitely understand why we you know we're trying to do it thin enough give it the consistency of, mm. you know, um, a noodle. Interesting. Okay, I look really confused right now, you guys, and I am. Okay, that's not gonna work. I wish thought I'd try something different. <laughs> so that's gonna, that's gonna be the best way. I think maybe don't even peel it all the way first. Don't it's peel too, it? It's too slippery. Okay. So like if you just, I'm learning you guys that if you peel it, if we had a um, spiralizer, we would make the, zo make the zoodles. We have some zoodles actually. We bought them pre-made and they were five dollars. Way too expensive for some zoodles. <laughs> buy the spiralizer. But I feel like if you, when you cut it, when you cut off the green, it's hard, too hard to grip. Like this is so much easier. So there you go. Just make as many thin strips as possible. We're gonna go ahead and lay these. Yeah, this is definitely just like this. That's really good. Yeah. That's what you want to happen. I'm curious if I can cut that. Don't cut your bang off. <laughs> She's trying to cut. Let me tell you, you guys. And um, it's definitely a challenge to get back into, you know, cutting things once I slice my finger open and have it to get stitches. When did you cut your finger open? Um, it was about four years ago. How did you do it? Were you <laughs> this is the stupidest thing ever, to be honest with you. I was cutting a watermelon. Um, cutting a watermelon. <laughs> I was cutting a watermelon and I split my finger open. I had to get three stitches and yeah, so I'm very like, as, as you see me, I was very hesitant. I wasn't going all in with it. It's obviously a lot easier. And she's when you showing press, you. But I have very strong hands. 
<laughs> from what Aquila tells me. <laughs> yes. So it's definitely, I was a little more hesitant because I'm, uh, you know, I have that thought about all the blood gushing out of my finger. But anyway, so yes, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you have to get stitches? I did. I had to get stitches. How I had many? to go to the emergency room. Yeah, like three or four. And that wasn't, that wasn't cool. That was not an experience that I would like to repeat. So I'm always extra, extra cautious when it comes to cutting things. I had to get stitches once. What did I you I had to do? get, I cut myself using a rotary blade. Oh, now that makes more sense. Right here. I have a scar <laughs> right there. Can you guys see that scar on my thumb? I don't know if you can see it, but it's 10 stitches. 10 Woo! stitches. Yeah, it's definitely not something, you know, you want to you know, repeat. Gonna, this is dangerous. I'm going to sit this down for a second, so... There we go. Um, so I want to know, have you seen any, um, what kind of problems do the girls have when they talk to you? Do they talk to you about their problems? Well, yes, they do. Um, it's, it's a lot of problems about like, um, they're very concerned lately about, you know. It's easy if you set it down. It is. It, they're very concerned lately about their future because um, a lot of the times when you're younger, you have all these dreams and aspirations. And also we, we help, you know, nourish those dreams with our different activities that we have with the girls and mm -hmm. help plan in activities and goals for their future and dream about what they want to do. But when they come into situations where they actually have to leave the orphanage and leave that environment that they've been used to all this time, um, basically being sheltered and catered to. And then I've have, um, I'm facing a lot of um, trying to help encourage them obviously one of my mm -hmm. missions to encourage the young girls to get to keep dreaming are they receptive to that yes they have been they have been it's challenging but i want to say that you know what i love about my organization is that we're not only going into telling them on you know how to dream and and do things better but we're actually trying to um help them physically Sorry. and give them the opportunity to be able to have the job opportunities, the vocational training, the, the transitional environment. It's one thing to talk about how you can transition out of a situation, but to actually be that hand to help them and pull them out of the situations that they're in of extreme poverty. Wow. It's, um, it's a complete lifestyle change for them. It is. It is. And you know what I've noticed that it's like they're having culture shock within their own country. Because the orphanages have really um, isolated and, and, and had them not really, sometimes it's, it's a little... Um, Soft enemy. They're used to having a lot of visitors and from different countries and a lot of things happen. So it's definitely just like, you know, a different experience for them to be out on their own and realize that they don't have a roof over their heads unless they provide it for themselves. So, you know, for anybody that's aging out or becoming an adult, it's a, it's a big transition. But you can only think about, you know, what they have to go through mentally. Um, to make that transition. Exactly. So it's hard. It is. So it's a lot of patience. Definitely. What kind of rules are you going to have at home, mom? You have rules? There's mom definitely of eight, There's 18 definitely. year olds <laughs> in a place where they're obviously like wanted. Yes. Men are wanting them, so they're out and about at an early age. Curfews. Yes, rules. there's definitely going to need to be curfews. We're going to have curfews. We're going to have rules upon entering the house. Because one thing I've learned about empowering people, they have to want to be empowered. They have to want to be receptive and enter the program willingly and say, you know what, I do want a better future for my life. I see that it could become something with this opportunity. So I'm definitely having them commit to the rules and the plan that this is what happens when you're in this house this is the purpose of this house I don't want to enable them and have them thinking you know I can just go here and 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 somebody's gonna take care of me and all that no that's not gonna happen we're empowering you to take care of yourself for you mm -hmm. to transition into independent living so there's gonna be rules and they will be abided by and we just want to because there's rules in society there's rules everywhere you go there's rules and laws and they need to learn you know mm -hmm. to abide by those rules so mm -hmm. we're, I, I want I'm not trying to enable them like I said they're gonna be 18 years old and they need to have the responsibility of being an adult but I'm not going to over shelter them as well mm -hmm. well that's good because they need that balance because they don't have parents definitely these kids are these Never girls have parents. don't have parents these girls literally come from the foster care system meaning that their parents what's typically the parents story well, sometimes they, like, um, there's a, a young girl whose um, parents were emotionally abusive, had mental problems, um, so she got taken away from, um, from the house, from the police. Mm -hmm. um, another one was sexually abused, um, and another one of them, her parents died, she's Haitian, their parents died in the... Um, in Haiti in the big earthquake. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Both How of her parents died. So um, basically from her leaving out of the orphanage, it's like, I don't have anybody. I don't have anybody. 
How are the orphanages, I don't know if you know this, how are the orphanages funded out there? Well, you know, a lot of them are government um, funded, but a lot of them are individually oh, opened by different organizations. Some of them by the United States organizations or a lot of them from the Dominican Republic. But they're generally all done by private funding, donations, um, but then the government does help. Okay. So for those of you guys just tuning in, I'm with Crystal Green. She has an organization in the Dominican Republic. She lives in the Dominican Republic. Wait, she moved to the Dominican Republic to open up this nonprofit called Eternally Cherished. And um, she's out there working with girls that are aging out of the foster care system. And they're going to be moving into a house with her, eight girls at a time. Yes. 18 years old. They'll be, there with, be with her for about a year. And she's going to nurture them, nurture them into the next phase of their life. So I'm honored to be here with her. So those of you guys just tuning in who don't know, this is who she is and this is what we're doing. We're working on meals that she can make at home for her girls and meals that she can easily teach her girls how to make. And what we're making today is lasagna, lasagna three ways. So we have this first half. I see my little babika doo-doo on there. Babika! <laughs> you can't eat this because this has beef in it. But you can make this without beef. You can make it with turkey. We did another half with lasagna. This is looking real meager, but listen, we're going to work that out. Um, so we're going to do one more version of the lasagna in two seconds. We're just going to lay some more of these strips out. Um, these lasagna, these zucchini strips, they were a booger to try to lay out. I'm going to show you what they look like when I lay it out. So you can see exactly. I'm going to put some right there too because I feel like I'm gonna do more cheese than meat with this one because I want it to be more veggie-ish okay so here's what it's looking like so far you guys it's not absolutely gorgeous but it can't always be listen life just can't always be gorgeous all right so there is the lasagna we're gonna just keep layering it I'm gonna layer it a little a few more times and see what we come up with which I think is gonna be something pretty nice let's add some extra what do we have there we have cheese we have meat Let's do some more sauce. There we go. Okay, there we go. Just dump this out like that. Back in the day, I was telling you, what do our mom, what's our moms do? What's the thing? <laughs> they like to add a little bit of water. Yes. Shake it up. Get the last bit because mm -hmm. you can't leave anything in there. You're wasting. We don't waste around <laughs> these parts. Is that right? Yes, girl. Let me go ahead and do the honors. There we go. Just go ahead. We'll... You can just drizzle that on whatever you want, whatever part. We're just going to fill this up now. The main thing is just, you know, making this cheesy, you guys. This is easy and cheesy. Easy, cheesy. But cheesy. <laughs> okay, so she went ahead and added a little bit of water, the perfect amount, obviously. Yeah, don't go crazy. You can't be thinning it out like some juice or something. <laughs> it's serious. You're going to mess up your stuff. I gotta charge my phone. It's critically low. Critically, not just low. <laughs> they said, it's charge hard. me or your show's over, basically. That's what you're uh -huh. to say. Here you go, guys. Give me two seconds. Is that working? Oh. It sure is. Now we're now we're good. Okay, it's crooked. I'll come in. I have the paint on. There we go. You got the paint? Yeah. I awesome. Have thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're getting some painting done here, so that's what. Um. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do one more little dollop of this ricotta cheese. Think it's just more cheese or not? No more cheese. Yeah, cheese and then put more layer. Or regular cheese. Yeah, I totally missed the part. I'm sorry. I was talking to where you first put the cheese at. You know what? <laughs> Let's go here. And I'm, we're I'm gonna, sure you did. We're just putting some dollops. It's all about the dollops. Yeah. This really looks amazing, you guys. And it's it's it when it comes to lasagnas and casseroles and stuff, like obviously, you know, it's all going together and just making a yummy boiling hot little dish. You're really good at this. So excited. She's really good at this. You guys give her some hearts. Give her some love. If you feel like she's really good at this, she just communicates and like brings out really great points. I'm like, why did I think of that? She's good. I mean, I, but you know, I'm a sucker for watching Food Network when I was younger my whole life, just watching, 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 watching. So, I mean, I totally understand the whole, you know, food chill out. Yeah, girl. <laughs> She's a chill girl. 
She's a chill girl. I'm definitely honored to be on your show as your first guest. My first guest ever. I've never had anybody before. It's usually just me, as you guys know, talking to you guys and wishing that you guys were here every single time. I'm always like, I wish there was a way to where I could have you guys like pop up on the screen. <laughs> and I haven't said it today because I'm happy that I'm here with her. That would be cool. That would be so cool. I want to do cooking shows with kids at some point where we like, you know, gather together online and we cook. We cook and we talk and we engage together. Well, I would definitely want to invite you out to the Dominican Republic when you're able to come and teach my girl some recipes. We could even go live from the DR and you'll really be able to see what's going down in the house. I cannot wait. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so we're going to do one last thing, you guys. I'm going to show you what this is looking like. Right there. That's it. So we have the layers of the zucchini. And I'm going to throw some cheese, literally. You want to do that? Honors? I sure would. Okay, so Crystal's going to go ahead and add the cheese. There we go. Okay. You can just get crazy with it. Get crazy, but don't tell me that because I really like cheese. Me That's too. one of my things. And when I'm making, like I told, I don't know if you guys were listening earlier, we're here when we talked about what my dishes are. I'm from California, born and raised, mm. so close to Mexico. You already know, tacos, enchiladas, everything with cheese all day. Ooh. So don't tell me to throw some cheese on it because I'm going to put some cheese on it. Girl. Put some cheese yes. on it. We got two bags, okay? <laughs> yeah, so I'm definitely excited about this. You know what a lot of the things I have a uh, hesitation in cooking new dishes is that just the hesitation of actually doing it. What if it doesn't turn out right? Can you throw some um, oregano on there? Definitely. What if it doesn't turn out right? What do I? And then I obviously you just I mean you end up cooking the same old thing, but why? You know? Yeah. So I'm super excited to be able to try something new, especially something nutritious. I'm always looking to find nutritious things. Right here. Okay, this is coming okay. along really. Oh, fast. that looks good. Let's get a, a good shot of this real quick, and then what we're gonna do is pop this right on in the oven. The oven's preset to 375. We agreed on that temperature just arbitrarily. <laughs> I was saying 350, she was saying 400, and we said, hey, let's just bake it at 375. If you guys think of another temperature, um, just let us know beforehand. Yeah, it's going in the oven. <laughs> at, at, three, at 375. <laughs> at 375. Here we go. Yay! <laughs> so that's two ways. We have one more way, you guys. Let's get this popping. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this right now. It's going to be really quick. I promise you it's not going to take long. The third way to make lasagna. This one I'm super excited about. I've always wanted to try this recipe, um, whether it be with lasagna or anything. I just think it's so cool, the presentation. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Crystal. <laughs> you are welcome. Okay, so here we go. Here's what this looks like. We're going to clean up this little area right here. Sometimes it gets crazy, you know, in the kitchen. Trying to keep it all together. You know what my mama told me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my mama told me okay. clean up as you go. Girl. Clean as you go. Because that's true. Ain't nobody trying to do all this cooking and then come back to a dirty kitchen and then have no. to No. It's I really, discouraging. I really like, honestly, if I'm cooking, you washing the dishes. Yeah. Is that is that in everybody's house or is that just It's me? not practical. <laughs> it's not. Trust me. It's not practical. For some people, it works. In my, it does not. I just do it all. I feel like you should at least wash the dishes if I'm cooking. Don't nobody want to go through all that after. Right. With your greedy, ungrateful <laughs> self. <laughs> you just going to eat your food and enjoy and not try to, you know, mm -hmm. you don't have to know how to cook, but we, wash the dishes. Right. But some people don't know how to wash the dishes. Well, then put them in a the dishwasher. Why are you playing? And if but you don't know, you need to learn how. ASAP. That's the truth. Pronto. I know how to say that in Spanish. <laughs> exactly. Pronto. <laughs> Pronto, Alberto. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Let me see. That. You know, I'm doing this a little easy. Let me go ahead and get a real sponge real quick and just wipe this up. All right. So this is what real women do. Get it, girl. There we go. You're like, damn, we just wipe it off. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yes. There we go. So that's... So what is this new other way of lasagna that we're making. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Great transition. Okay. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to fill this pot up with water. And as she fills this pot up with water, I'm going to take these red and orange peppers and I'm going to cut them open. 
I'm just going to cut a nice little ring around it. Instead of ring around the rosy, ring around the pepper. <laughs> and just cut it, cut the top off, pop it out, and you're going to rinse out the, you know, take the, pull the membranes in there and the seeds out. You just kind of give it a good little, put some water in there, shake it around a little bit, shake it violently actually. And you're good to go. Do the same thing with the other pepper. Now this is something that's been around for ages. You grew up on, well I grew up on these. My mom made these for us growing up. Um, and I love them. You can do anything. You can do so many things with, with peppers, bell peppers. We have some green ones too. They're just not as sweet and fun. So I'm not going to use those, but we have them right here. They're always a little bit cheaper too. So if you're on a budget, go for the green, not the red or the orange. It costs a little bit more. And well, I don't get that. Why? Because they're good. Or we don't taste the same. Oh, no. Okay. The, the orange are like really sweet. The mm. red's really, really sweet. The That's green true. just tastes like green. Like literally, like it tastes like green. <laughs> if green had a flavor. It'd be that. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So now we have these. We're going to get, whoops, we're going to get rid of this. We don't need this. So I'm going to throw this in here. Okay. So there. That part's done. Now what we're going to do, the pop's on the oven. We're going to take these guys and we're going to stick them in the jacuzzi as regular races. <laughs> Just let them, and then let them hang out. <laughs> let them play. <laughs> you guys watch Rachel Ray? Rachel, I love Rachel. She's awesome. I love Rachel too. She's like, okay, guys, where's the EVOO? <laughs> I know. Where's the EVOO? I sold it. She sold me on that. I had the EVOO ever since I watched her show. I was like, you gotta have the EVOO. You gotta have the e EVOO. I don't have any EVOO though. I have I got some butter. <laughs> I got some canola oil. <laughs> I ain't got no EVOO. Okay, so that's that. Next thing, while we're waiting on this, we have the we have the lasagna in the oven. We're gonna start on, and I feel like maybe we're doing a bit much right now. I think we should do the cookie stuff. It's up to you. Do you guys want to see cookies? Y'all want to see us make some cookies? We got these it. are flourless cookies. I'm not gonna lie. Listen, whether you here or not, we're doing the cookies. We're doing the cookies. <laughs> I'm eating the so cookies. So let's go ahead and let's do this. Okay. So what we need now? Oh, wait a second. Yeah, we can do that. Let me go ahead and um, multitask. You guys know how it goes. So we're gonna make these flourless cookies. They look so divine. The first time I ever had a flourless cookie, I was at this cool little shop in New York City, and I don't know the name of it. But it was like $3, and you know it had to be good. $3 for a cookie. This cookie had zero amounts of flour in it. It was so good. So when I saw this recipe, I was like, got to have that. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the noodles to the side. We're going to set the meat to the side. because while we just, We're just going to let those peppers blanch just for a minute. That means just kind of get them soft just so we don't need to bake them. Um... So we're going to make these cookies right now. Get those going. and Everything should be done around the same time. The good thing about lasagna is this. It's not going to take long for it to cook. It's all it needs to do is heat up through and through. That's it. And if you have to abort the mission and pull it out the oven a little bit sooner, you're not going to die. That's true. Whereas a chicken, you might die. <laughs> You've got to cook it through and through. I think when you have eight girls in a house, I think you just have to have a lot of like one pan recipes that's up true. your sleeve. Definitely. I feel like that's essential. Okay, here we go. So let's do this. We have what we're going to need for this recipe, you guys. If you want to make flourless cookies, here's what you need. You need to have, uh, have one and a half cups of powdered sugar. We have that. Got that right there. We need to have um, one third cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. We have that. We also need one or two large egg whites. We got those right there. And we also need one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And sorry about that. And we need some sweet chocolate, some semi-sweet chocolate chips. All right, you got those too. Okay, and this doesn't call for any like regular sugar, which is pretty cool. Okay, so. What we're going to do is this. Uh, in a large bowl, we're going to whisk together the icing, sugar, cocoa, and salt. Let me get you some, um, we need parchment paper. Oh, and that's here. Perfect, and we need a pan. 
Now the parchment paper is the wax paper, right? Well, it's not wax, it's actually paper. It's actually paper, mm -hmm. okay, see, I'm not really good. I don't bake much. Um, mm -hmm. When I do, it would be that Toll House box mm -hmm. and you just go and pull the cookies apart and throw them on a pan. Parchment paper is good for those too. Really? Absolutely, because what it does is it stops it from sticking so you don't need to clean pans off. I'm learning new things here, you guys. You want to use parchment paper, it's good for life. Okay. Okay, so here we go. There's like this tape. Okay, so. <laughs> Parchment, <Parchment's> baby! <laughs> okay, so it's like, you cannot bake without it. I like to fold it over a little bit, kind of tuck it away. Give us a little, there we go. There we go. These are something your girls can make. It's literally only how many ingredients? One, two, three, four, five, six ingredients. Yes. That's not too bad. Not at all. Okay. There we go. Let me see how long we've been. You know what we're going to do, you guys? We are going to actually do something a little quirky because I feel like this segment's getting hold on sorry guys what we're going to do right now is this we are going to conclude this part one and if you're interested tune back in to part two where we make our cookies and where we pull out the lasagna and do the great reveal and tune back in because we're going to show you the uh, third type of uh, lasagna the lasagna that's inside of the bell pepper so stay tuned um, tune back in and I'll say about what three minutes Give us yeah. a chance to regroup a little bit, and we'll be back to make the third lasagna as well as do the cookie and also the, the lasagna reveal. Mm. Thank you for joining us for part one. We'll see you again in a few minutes. Peace. Deuces.